There once was a girl who loved doing theater. She started acting when she was 10 years old. She played in multiple musicals and plays in her musical club and at her high school. When she finally graduated high school, she needed to make a really important choice. What does she want to study? She thought about it for a long time and she finally decided that she wanted to do something that she really loved. Theater. So she started auditioning. She auditioned for the study drama, and it was a real roller coaster. But good news came. She got accepted. At that moment, she realized that she could do theater every day for the rest of her life. And she was so happy. And then she lived happily ever after. Until a few weeks ago when she realized that what she considered the most happiest time of her life also had some dark sides to it. The girl in the story? That's me. Inappropriate behavior within theater is not something that a lot of people deal with on a daily basis, which explains why it's not talked about a lot. I want to change this. I want to create a movement and create a safer and more free theater culture in which people get chances based on their talent and not based on how far they will cross their own boundaries. So to get some things clear for my story, I'm gonna talk about inappropriate behavior. And what do I mean by inappropriate behavior? A lot of people think about sexual inappropriate behavior and that is definitely part of my story. But within theater, there's also a lot of bullying, sexism and misuse of power. And especially the, the last one, the misuse of power, is I think um, one of the causes of the other behavior. So I will start talking about this and um, I'm going to explain to you how the power dynamics work within theater and why it is an issue that this is being mis misused. Okay, within theater you have different roles. You have a director, you have an assistant director, you have actors, and it can also be uh, teachers and students or choreographers and dancers within theater. But for my story, I'm gonna mostly talk about directors and actors. Um, the director is the one that makes all the decisions because the director is responsible, responsible for the story and he or she needs to make sure that the story is represented in the right way. The assistant director uh, supports the director in this um, process and the actors uh, are submissive to the director. Um, so you can say based on this that the director has a lot of power over the rest because he or she makes all the decisions within the process. To make sure that the director has all the tools he or she needs, the, the actors, like I already said, have to be really open, workable, and submissive to what the director asks from them. Um, so to say this submissiveness also creates a bigger gap in power between the actors and the directors. And besides that, the director also uh, is really influencing, influencing the career of the uh, actors because um, the actors most of the time have a really big network within the theater culture and if he or she for example says to other people that you as an actor are not really workable or not open enough that will definitely influence the chances you have on getting different roles or jobs and another factor within this power dynamics is that um, the actors in theater always have to audition for everything. Uh, you have to audition to get into school, you have to audition to get different roles, you have to audition to get in a theater company. So they're always just competing with each other. And then again, in this auditioning process, the director is again uh, the one who makes the decision about if the actor or student or dancer is getting the role or not. This is uh, almost done 
with other people. So it's not only the director, but the director has like the end saying in this. Um, so you can say that the director again has the ab ability to influence the actor's career again. These different ways of how the system is organized makes it that the director just has a lot of power over the actors or dancers or students. And especially for starting actors or starting dancers or students, this, is, uh, this power dynamic mostly influences them negatively and personally. Uh, that's because they are starting to create a network, they're still searching what are my boundaries, how do I get to know who I am as an actor, and you could say that they are very vulnerable, so um, it's easier to, for a director to just push them in some way, because they just don't know who they are. I was asking myself during my expedition, why have we created this kind of power dynamic uh, in which the actors or students or dancers are being negatively, personally influenced when they are at the base of theater? Because without actors, dancers or students, the director can tell a story. And I think we need to start questioning the system because only a small group is now profiting of the existing system and only a small group has all the power and I was wondering if there is a way to create a system in which we can take away this power and spread it over all people involved or even take away this power entirely. I think if we want to change the system in this way, um, a, lot, a lot needs to happen because we have to break the system down whole and build it up from nothing. And to, to create such a big change, um, I think it starts with bringing awareness. And how do you bring awareness? With talking. Um, like I said, Bringing awareness starts with talking. Before something can change, people need to see what the problem is and why it is a problem. If you look at inappropriate behavior in general, uh, I see that a lot of attention is going to there right now. And a good recent example is the um, episode of the YouTube series Bose, which was about the inappropriate behavior within the Voice of Holland. And both really gave um, the victims in this story a platform to share their experiences and just bring it into the world so that people could see what was happening. And what you saw happening after the episode was that some processes started to happen, people were talking about it, and uh, victims started to press charges. Um, and more and more people just really felt that they could speak up about their experience and just share what they've been through. Um, this movement is still happening right now and I really, really hope it changes something within uh, the music industry. Uh, if we then look at theater and inappropriate behavior, it has been going on for years and years now. I have found multiple articles, I have found multiple uh, documentaries, I spoke to a lot of different people who all um, confirm that this behavior is going on for a long time now. Uh, I read an article um, or an interview with Jacqueline Blom. She's a Dutch actress and um, she said in, in the interview that she is experiencing this behavior for whole, her whole career now and she's been acting for over 30 years. Um, she also said in the interview that she try to speak up about it, and try to make people aware that this is really a problem for people within theater. But she said, no one just really seemed to listen to me or found it important enough to pay attention to me. So she eventually just stopped trying and uh, accepted it the way that it was. 
But I really want to open up this conversation again because I feel like it deserves the attention that it needs to get. And uh, I really want to show that people who experience this behavior are not alone. And that it's not your fault in this world where there is this pressure and where you have influences from all sides coming onto you, that it's not your fault that your boundaries are being crossed. Uh, I really want to show that we also need to look into this issue together, inside and outside the theatre world. Because if we really want to change something and we keep it just within this, this existing system, does it really change something then? I feel like we just need to get the attention as much as we can to bring awareness. Um, I think that also bringing awareness and talking about this problem maybe will show this small group of people within the system how their behavior influences the world they are working in. Um, because I came across another interview with uh, Marcus Asidi. Uh, he's a theater director at theater company Oostpol. And he was accused of inappropriate behavior a few years back. And um, he explained in the interview how he was really shocked and um, heartbroken by these uh, accusations against him because he never realized that he was hurting people. He really had the idea that he was doing what he could to create a real safe space within his theater company. Um, but he took a year off after this accusation to just self-reflect. And he said, like, I realized that my ideas of intimacy and power just are so different from other people's ideas that I just never realized that I was hurting people. So why do I share this with you guys? Because I feel like if we want to create this change, we need to take everybody in this change and not only um, blame this small group, small group of people, but really take them with us in this change. Because, as I just told, maybe they don't do it consciously or maybe they don't know better. Um, by talking about this issue, we can create awareness, like I said. But it definitely will take some time to create this change in this movement. So, in the meantime, I see how I, we can uh, use communication as a tool to already create a more safer space. Uh, theater involves people. And this means that emotions and mental aspects all also are in play. Uh, to create theater, you have to um, make some sort of conflict to keep it interesting. And conflict always involves emotions. You have a conflict with two different goals, two opposite goals or two opposite emotions. So you can say that you as an actor are challenged to look and feel and experience things that maybe might hurt you. To make sure you as an actor can safely look for this conflict but not cross your own boundaries, um, you really need to communicate what your boundaries are. And to be clear, I'm not saying that the people that experience this behavior are responsible for only responsible for the change, but I feel that we need to, if we want to speak up, we need to speak up in every aspect of the system. So um, by communicating your own boundaries, you will stay true to yourself and hold people accountable for their actions if they show this behavior. My expedition changed my view on theater uh, in a way that I also really see the negative sides of it now. Uh, when you love something as much as I love theater, it's some, sometimes really hard to <laughs> admit that there are also these negative things going on. Um, I started my expedition with the thought, wow, 
I am so glad that I never experienced this behavior when I was acting. And during my expedition, I realized that I did. But I just brushed it off as something normal, like, oh no, this, is, this happens sometimes when you're doing theater, yeah. It, it's just part of it. If you want to accomplish something within theater, you just have to show how talented you are and how workable you are and open and feel all these kind of emotions. And sometimes I really did this, these things at the expenses of my own boundaries. And um, I just realized that <laughs> during my expedition, what was really weird to realize after five years. And this is not only my experience, uh, but I talked to different people during my expedition and I heard almost the same story every time. The pressure to perform and the influences from other people just really can make it difficult to keep track of your own boundaries. And besides this, with acting, the line between you as a person and your role as a character is really vague sometimes. So maybe your character is okay with doing these things, but underneath is still you as, as yourself. When I realized I actually had experienced it, this behavior, something changed with me. I gained a feeling of responsibility. Responsibility to share my story and responsibility to share the story of others. An old friend of mine who I actually met at theater school just reached out to me and said, hey, hey, uh, I see you are doing uh, research into this topic and I'm really interested in it too. Would you have, can we grab a cup of coffee sometimes to talk about it? And I was really excited because I hadn't seen her in a long time. I was like, yes, oh wow, cool. She's going to talk with an old friend about something I love. And we grabbed a cup of, cup of coffee and we talked for a few hours. We talked about memories from then, and talked about theater in general, and talked about the topic. And then at the end of the conversation, she explained to me that she was actually experiencing this behavior on a daily basis at her theater school now. And that just really shocked me. And I was really heartbroken when I heard it because someone who's like really dear to my heart is experiencing this right now and I can do anything about it. And at that moment I just realized how important this topic is to me and how I really want to change something about it. Uh, I'm still figuring out how. How I, as a social innovator, am going to change something about this. But after my expedition, I know for sure that I am going to change something about it. Uh, I just really feel the need to speak up for the people with a passion for theater. I really feel the need to speak up for all of my old friends who are still experiences, experiencing this behavior daily. I really want to speak up and stand up for all the actors, actors actresses, dancers, students who are afraid to speak up because maybe it will influence their career. But most of all, I really want to speak up and talk about this for all the 10 year old kids out there who are now realizing that their passion is theater. And I hope I can speak up and give them the happily ever after that I maybe, maybe didn't got.